Welcome to Reliterated, the lowbrow book club of grown-ass adults reading the children's books popular in the 1990s, but with 2020's hindsight. Fair warning, we use language too mature for kids, analysis too immature for literary scholars, and ignorance too profound to be inoffensive to everyone. And guess what? It's our birthday! <laughs> birthday to us! Woo! We, Yay! We've been doing one this year. for one year, guys. Our first episode released March 2nd, 2021. Nice. Well, no better Excellent. time to quit than now. <laughs> so, so we would like to <laughs> formally announce <laughs> that we're giving up. No, we're not giving up. I'm giving up a whole year. <laughs> yeah, one and done. That's yep. it. No. No, we're going even harder starting now. We're uh doing this uh not live, but we're video we're doing a vi- this a video episode uh this time around. Uh and we're going to be releasing this on our YouTube and Facebook um spaces that we have. And Hell along, yes. Alongside the usual mm-hmm. audio, so not to alienate our usual listeners. But you can also see our faces by looking us up on YouTube and Facebook. See what we look there like. There we go. Yep. Because we're, <laughs> we're handsome handsome fellas. The usual, uh, the usual cavalcade of uh, bearded gentlemen doing a podcast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it, uh <clears throat> The whole reason for doing this at all is kind of to practice at this whole video thing that we're trying here. We had uh, we had other plans for our one year anniversary, but you know, <laughs> it's okay. We will we will <laughs> release this, and uh, hopefully, we can bring that other idea to you later. <laughs> yes, this brings us to our profound ignorance segment. Uh, <laughs> right off the bat, let's start. Yeah, let's, let's tear the let's bandaid off. Get the yeah, elephant out of the to. room. We got to rip it off. We do not have a Bruce Coville interview for this episode. We had Bruce. Colville. Mind you, <laughs> we had an interview with Bruce Coville. We, we had Bruce an Colville. amazing talk yep. with Bruce Coville. The three of us. He's a it was wonderful, wonderful and gentleman. Bruce Coville. Yes, had a great conversation with Bruce Coville, but about forty-five minutes into it. I realized that there was a certain red light not lit up, a certain timer not ticking upward, and uh, I had to, I, I just had to interrupt, and, uh, well, this is what it sounded like. It had to be a very effective way to get a lot done, and to stitch a book together in a way that was pretty coherent. Um, so that, that has worked very well for me. I call it the ever-expanding outline. Very cool. Hey guys, um, I had an issue over here. I actually had not been recording what? any of this, like any of this. Oh gosh! Oh my, my goodness, I dude! I'm so sorry. I, I'm oh, looking. No. I'm looking at the files, and there was. It's like a corrupted. It's like a zero eighty kilobyte file from when I hit record, and oh, we didn't get like any of that first part. I am so sorry. Dude, I, I can't really do that again. That was a 45 minute rule. No, 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 yeah. no, no, you're fine. Yeah. No, we do not no. ask you to do that That's again. not you. We had some really good stuff, too. Um, I'm so bummed. No. I'm just crushed. I'm just crushed, guys. I know I can destroy your soul in about 30 seconds, Sandy. <laughs> and, and I'm working hard not to do this. I hope, yeah. I'll just shut up. <laughs> Yeah, and you stay quiet until he's gone. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and you look this way. When the tech fails, you think how lucky you are that that you are in a separate building where they can't get at you. Yeah, <laughs> so sorry. And I'm glad you guys cared enough to want to do this. Um, mm-hmm. I'll never speak to any of you again, but I'm glad you cared enough to want to do this. <laughs> Care about the books, so you have a certain amount of leeway for me not wanting to just like carry out a window. Defenestrate. Defenestration. Yeah, that means. Or somebody through a window. Hmm. I will add that to my repertoire. You are all now. defenestrated. <laughs> <laughs> no. And yeah, it, it was an embarrassment that I will carry with me for the rest of my life. <laughs> and uh, 
Hopefully, I'm. I'm. It sounded promising that he would come back and uh, try to at least get a little bit of uh, the magic that uh, we had created there, because he had yeah. some great stuff to say about being an author, writing for children, and he was a hell of a nice guy. He I was mean, he really nice. Yeah. After even after what happened, he he literally told us the. Uh, there's a word for throwing someone out a window because that's what we want to do to Andy. <laughs> yep, defenestration. But, uh... <laughs> <coughs> defenestration. Yep. I was familiar yep. with that word. Defenestration. So before. we we learned that, and um, but no, he 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 actually was very nice to Andy. He's like, I know, <laughs> I, I actually know what you feel like. I've lost work. Mm-hmm. I understand. Mm-hmm. So you know, I'll. He said he'd come back, and I believe I do <laughs> truly believe he will because he's just he's a stand up guy. He's a great, great person. And yeah, I I I'm I cherish that time that we got to spend with him. So mm-hmm. it it was really fun. Um I told him straight uh when all of this happened, I, I told him that if nothing else comes from it, I really enjoyed talking to him and, and listening to what he had to say. He he had some pretty good insight on writing and keeping yourself going, uh, uh, tactics he uses and uh, thoughts. Uh, he gave us the reason for the My Teacher is an Alien series and everything, and it's not what I would have thought. And mm-hmm. it was it was really cool. And mm-hmm. I believe that we'll be able to capture it again because he was easy to talk to. And I think that overall he had a good time talking with us. Right up until that moment. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just uh, you, you'll be able to see it in the video clip that I added into this uh, this video. But just the look on his face, the way he took a sip of his drink. Oh, man. Here I actually had not been recording what? any of this. Like any of this. Oh, gosh. Oh, oh my, my God. goodness, I dude. I'm so sorry. He's just, oh, yeah. <laughs> just that thousand mile stare. Just like. Oh yeah, he was he was annoyed, but I think that he also understood. Like we're new to all this. This is that was the first time we had done. Um, we did a short thing for the crimpets where we recorded video with the three of us, but it was literally what five or six minutes long. Yeah, it, it just wasn't wasn't very long, and it wasn't very well put together because we just you know I was using the camera on my computer and mm-hmm. it yeah. Kind of it like was we real quick. <laughs> it's yep. the, it's the exact same oh, methodology yeah, but... I'm using right now to capture this, as a, right. as I was using for the uh, the crimpet video. And... But it was something we did just out of nowhere, mm-hmm. way early. I mean, that was third episode, yeah. you know, or yeah. third or fourth episode that we did that. Yeah, but I will admit so... it's the, it, was, it was the added pressure video of the content. moment. <laughs> <laughs> right. I will admit it was the added pressure of the moment that made me overlook the fact that my recorder wasn't recording and we didn't have any yep. redundancies set up. So when one thing fails, we didn't have a backup. So our apologies go nope. to Mr. Coville and uh, we absolutely very much hope to get yes, to talk to you we're again. Very, soon. very sorry. <laughs> yep. Wonderful man. Hope to talk yes. again. <laughs> So now that we got that out of the way, <laughs> hi everybody. <Right. laughs> How you doing? <laughs> One year. It's been a heck of a year, hasn't it? Oh boy, and it's it gonna has. Be, it's gonna be a heck of a year going forward too. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, for sure. Hopefully, soon enough, I'll be walking on two feet again. Mm-hmm. That uh, I'm a big fan of bipedalism, and yep. uh, what am I call you a bipedalist? I have learned Yep, <laughs> I've learned to appreciate it more now than ever mm-hmm. as I am approaching nine weeks on crutches. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, I have been in stuff. that boat. I broke an ankle <laughs> back in 2013. No, not 2013, 2003. Yeah, 2003. And that whole process of just having to sit back and not do the things you want to do and feel like the world's going on without you it's not fun you're trying you know like josh made a comment to me last night that i need to stay still and it's like i get that i need to stay still but i still <laughs> need to go to the bathroom i still need to eat food mm-hmm. i still have two small children i you know that you, 
<laughs> this is the main thing, I think. But that yeah, one is tough, yeah. Well, that's a big when difference the boys between are here, my situation they... and your situation. <laughs> I was not a father right. yet. Right, <laughs> yeah. So, so it, it it's yeah. it's all good. I I feeling good. I think that it's actually starting to finally heal now. Uh, you know the screws in there, so it shouldn't be moving or anything at this point. So if it is, I got bigger problems. <laughs> <laughs> right. <clears throat> just uh, you know, rub some dirt on it. You'll be fine. <laughs> walk yeah, it off. just rub some dirt just on it. Walk it off. <laughs> walk it off. <laughs> yeah, mm. he tried that. It didn't work. <laughs> So, you know, 42 episodes, that means that there were 10, 10 episodes short of having an episode a week in the year. That's that's pretty good. Yeah, I'm pretty impressed pretty with good. our ability actually... to keep up and actually read our books on time to, uh, to do our episodes. Absolutely. I mean, at first we were just planning on doing it every two weeks anyway. Mm-hmm. And then then some we all got motivated and we're like, mm-hmm. ooh, we can do this weekly. And then <laughs> about three weeks in, we're like, did we just shoot ourselves in the foot? Did we? <laughs> but no, we got yeah, there. We, no. we're, doing, we're making do. We came to the conclusion pretty quickly that we need to program in some breaks to uh, to what we mm-hmm. do. And I think we got mm-hmm. a we got a good uh, structure going of we get those uh, choose your own adventure and uh, recap talk episodes for each chapter going uh that give us a chance to either catch up in our reading or take a small break from reading (laughs) yep Uh, yeah no that was definitely uh, when we originally started this the reiterated episode specifically was my thought for a break like we definitely need that break and it just gives us a chance to talk and plus we've listened to all the episodes by that point so we go over and we see oh i wish i'd have thought of this i wish i'd have mentioned that so it definitely helps and then and then we've taken some sabbaticals too a couple little month long breaks to to buy us a little bit of sanity right <laughs> amongst our busy lives <laughs> yeah yep. had a couple episodes where it was just me and one of you guys but yep. Don't worry, I'm always here. I don't, <laughs> I don't have a I life. I got nowhere else to be. <laughs> I got nothing. I got no kids, no ladies. I got uh, my brother, but right now oh, he's even gone. So, you know, hey. right? Not much. Nothing. Nothing really holding me back. So I'll be here with you, listeners, every time. <laughs> if it comes right down you to don't... it, it'll be just Josh and uh, I think Janelle will gladly yeah. join you too. <laughs> yeah. I'll get my brother to come over. <laughs> and your brother, yeah. <laughs> Just have a I, I think He'll we did a good point. I think we had a good idea in reading children's books too, because we're not exactly reading yeah, they're not the novels. type of literature. Yeah. We're not yeah. reading the great it's not works huge of eight hundred page novels. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. No, we might so take really I'm it. I'm in the future I'd like to take a time where we do cover the Harry Potter series, but those I think we're gonna need a little bit more time to get through because those so too, are yeah. substantially thicker. Aren't you go aren't you reading one of those right now? Yeah, with, cur- currently uh, currently I'm reading my son, yeah, uh book one, uh Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. And the books awesome. do get longer <laughs> each as each subsequent novel so yeah it's as if it's as if the the readers aged up with the books it's mm-hmm. weird alongside the characters right yeah <laughs> yep so i'm actually currently got a big old thick one right here because we do a <laughs> lot of shit talking about raw doll so mm. i thought you know probably best that at least one of us take time to try and figure out you know does he have any redeeming qualities does he, uh, he was i'll get back not- to you how far did you get in there <laughs> i'll get back to you on that. <laughs> okay we may do a special episode strictly devoted to roll doll the man so we can yep. tear him down make it like a ken burns documentary <clears throat> Roald Dahl was an absolute piece of shit. He supported the Nazis. Not in the way you'd think. He shot them down, but he believed in their cause. Hey, man, two sides of a coin, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
I, I say that about our government. We need a new coin. Yeah, we need a new coin for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Let's yeah. not get started on that, though. Mm -hmm. You know, I think uh, uh, one of the good moves that we made, we talked about it multiple times, and I think we all agree on this, was changing the format up a little bit. And yes. those first those first episodes, it was really easy for us to get into a two or three part episode about a book mm -hmm. because there was so much to cover and we were so worried about skipping parts or missing something. Mm -hmm. And we were trying to do it all on this linear timeline. And I think that uh, changing it up was a really great idea. It It's kind of funny because if you listen to the Charlotte's web episode and then one of our newer episodes it, really we almost could have gone that way right from the beginning but I think that right off the bat we started getting like oh we want to make sure we're telling everything uh, we got this act this idea in our head that we missed something mm -hmm. with Charlotte's web and uh yeah no I think I think that what we've done the last probably seven or eight episodes and some of my favorites so far. Mm -hmm. I think it was yeah, the Bob's yeah. your uncle, and <laughs> then analyzing it rather than just telling what happens in the story. Right. You know. Right. I think it was the other day Janelle was telling me. I think Charlotte's Web was uh, probably her favorite episode, if not one of them. I don't know if she can hear me right now. If she can back me up on that one. Was this was she's the person Web your in, favorite? She's the person in the chair. She can yell out. <laughs> she even in the room? Charlotte's Web really is a great episode. Yeah, I tell people that that's a good one. I guess she's not. <laughs> oh. Okay, we but did yeah. our we did our first episode, and then we dove into <laughs> telling every ounce of the story. After that, I think what happened was we got into a story that you in particular love. Like, love, love, mm. love. And so you didn't want to miss anything in it. And mm. that's what kind of cemented us into that that way of doing it. And then as we time went on, we're like, this is... <laughs> <laughs> I think we want to do something a little bit different. And that's when yeah. we started doing the summary and, so, and you know. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I think it would be fun to go back and maybe do that in the future, future but not anytime soon but go back and do some of those earlier ones and i would say probably nine years from now when we're finished yeah. with the worlds of power books of course <laughs> worlds of po oh, <laughs> right. the worlds of power books oh uh, plan for i'm the so next angry right years. now they're still like they're still like the one that we're doing next is still like 50 dollars right now mm -hmm. i know i haven't been able to get that one i did however get ninja gaiden so okay. yeah so I have but two I worlds of power books. I believe Mark uh, capitalized on a, a low price point and picked up his copy of uh, Simon's Quest. Okay. So there is a we do have a shot of uh, making Castlevania two our next uh, crossover video game episode. I mean, push comes to shove, I can just read it when I'm there. It didn't doesn't take that long to read those <laughs> books. Right, right, they're pretty quick. Mm-hmm. And you have it, don't you, Andy? I do have it, yes. Yeah, so there's at least them, two Andy? copies. Not all of them. I have a bunch of them. Okay. I've been buying them yeah, up as you, they hit You low, pulled them all out, and I was like, Jesus, points. dude. Yeah. <laughs> buying them up as a college fund for Xander. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Before right. Before we drove up the price of them by uh, by making them big. Yeah, it's yep. <laughs> all this podcast fault. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, man, we oh, really man. did it. <laughs> Uh, speaking of crossovers, I, en I enjoyed having our crossovers. I, I like our occasional guests here and there. Yeah. So. Yeah, I had fun with that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I really enjoyed we having were, all of us in the room. I think that's what I was going to say. I think it was more the fact that we were all there together. Mm -hmm. hanging the out, one where we were all which, in the same room together. Yep. Yeah, because that doesn't happen ever. <laughs> We did get Matt to admit that Sam Gribbley is fucking the Falcon. That's true. We did. <laughs> yeah, they, no, we did. I mean, like, so that was a good episode too for for an admission to that. 
Yeah, right in the cloaca. <laughs> right in the cloaca. <laughs> <laughs> but we've also had our our mostly detractor and more <laughs> more hype girl on now. Yeah. Now that we've allowed her into some episodes, she's been more of a hype girl lately than <laughs> yeah. a detractor. She's a she's a official her official title is our hype girl and uh yeah, she's she's gotten the the taste of podcasting now and uh she's been champing at the bit for every opportunity she can get to join us for for a guest spot. And uh well, the, the next one we we plan on having her on is uh Lion the Witch in the Wardrobe. So that's one of her favorite books, I believe. And it does have very she can give us more insight onto the poetry aspect of it mm-hmm. because I know there is a lot of that in that book. So mm-hmm. she is a writer and poet, yes. So very good. And more we are talking about that Janelle. Yes, that is Janelle. Yeah. That's aka yeah, J, yeah. <laughs> aka Hype Girl. <laughs> And we we may be adding a a segment to our re reiterated episodes called Hypes and Gripes. <laughs> Gripes spelled G R Y P E S. That might not be a bad idea to segment out our, our reiterated episode in mm-hmm. general. So mm-hmm. not to talk shop right now, but yeah, more more to come on that. A good idea. We're not gonna yeah. yep. make the sausage in front of everybody. Because <laughs> that's gross. Yeah, yeah, it's gross to watch it make sense. Dirty jobs and might grow. That's <laughs> what that's what the sausage looks like. Ugh. I saw something the other day that they said it's a it's a terrible shame that Mike Rose's la- last name isn't penis. To be micro penis. <laughs> Mike Rose penis. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Nice. They they said that to him on Facebook and he interacted with it. I don't remember what he said, but nice. it was it was pretty funny. <laughs> Classy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For sure. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking at our uh our download stats over the past year. Okay. Uh in our first year of pod- of podcasting, uh we've had 1,673 downloads, which is nothing to sneeze at. So, nope. Very appreciative of our loyal listeners and even our occasional listeners. Um, our leading uh, country that people listen from is, of course, the USA. Um, 674 downloads from Michigan, 255 from California. And uh, can anybody guess what the third leading uh, download downloaded state of our podcast is? Tennessee. Josh. Not Florida. Not Florida. Josh is correct. <laughs> <laughs> Josh is correct because it is Washington. Washington oh, has our Washington. third most downloads with 46. Closely Excellent. followed. I can see that. By well, Pennsylvania. Thanks, Washington. At 45. Oh, Thank you, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Thanks for not throwing batteries at us. <laughs> Very nice. We got uh, <laughs> got some listeners in Canada as well. Ooh, 13 up downloads north there. from Ontario, 12 Thanks, downloads eh? from Alberta, we appreciate it. <laughs> uh, three from British Columbia, and one from New Brunswick. Ooh, if you're in BC, if you're up in Vancouver, <clears throat> invite me up. I'll come. Mm-hmm. It'll be fun. And then <laughs> who wants to guess what our third most popular country that has downloaded it us is? We, the third most downloads we've had of this podcast has come from which country? Oh, man. Do you want an is honest answer ins- or a weird one? I mean, the honest answer is pretty weird. Is it the United Arab Emirates? <laughs> nope. Okay. <laughs> that was my weird answer anyway. So We have had 23 downloads from the Philippines. Excellent. So, okay. Cool. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Thanks to Philippines. I do want to visit there. My dad went there and he said it was beautiful. So I would love to go out there and visit. Mm-hmm. Very cool. I'm glad that we translate somehow <laughs> to. <Yeah. laughs> There's yeah. a lot of English speakers there, dude. I, I so. get it. I get it. Mm-hmm. But and there's so. a whole bunch of just random countries with like one or two or four downloads. Is Swaziland on there? I do not see a Swaziland. No. Oh, 
I did a book report on them, or a, a report on them in you did a report on Swazi junior high. high. Yeah. They're a very <laughs> small country in Africa. Sound like something out of a Jonathan Rand novel. I did a oh, report on that, that once. Guy. <laughs> <laughs> I still have not read anything by Jonathan Rand because I didn't end up getting you in on the bat. I didn't You're have to lucky. do the biotic bats. <laughs> oh, man. So I avoided that like the plague. <laughs> You're lucky. That shit sucks. I actually like <laughs> reading bad books and tearing them up <laughs> on the show. It's a lot <laughs> of fun. It's, I know that we have a certain person that is a fan of ours that loves when I get very angry about books. <laughs> so <laughs> she loves that episode. <laughs> Hi, Laurel. <laughs> I miss you. <laughs> so, yeah. But yeah. Well, <laughs> I want to say let's do some more Michigan Chillers books just for that reason. <laughs> so what right. we've heard is that the first one is a pretty good. So the first I'm Michigan going Chillers to read book. the first one. Was that Detroit? But I don't know what one that is. Is it the uh, Detroit one? I don't one? know. I've, I'd have to bring it. The Dinosaurs of Detroit? <laughs> yeah, because I heard that that one had, it was like somebody put effort into it. And then after, mm. I think they said the third book, they are all just follow the same script. It's like, ugh. So. Yeah, unfortunately, there's a very uh, obvious formula. But you know used. what? It inspired me to start writing again. Yeah, how's that coming, so, by the anything, way? How's your version yeah, of well. Bionic Bats? <laughs> Not well. Not well. Oh, no. It's uh, terrible. I'm about, I'm about two chapters in, two and cha- it okay. has taken on a life of its own, and they are no, it's no longer the Bionic Bats of Bay City okay. uh, because it makes more sense for them to be the Bionic Bats of Bad Axe because Charity Island is closer to Bad Axe. All right. Plus, you I don't want to get sued for <laughs> copyright probably safer we yeah. could actually use a little bit of uh some something that came from that bruce coville episode or interview that nobody else gets to hear and that's <laughs> that was his his method of writing <laughs> sorry andy <laughs> but his method of writing uh mm-hmm. how he sets himself up for the month and he's got to have so much done you know he, I can say that as many times I've started books and made it a few chapters in and then stopped uh, that having that deadline for your, even if it's just for yourself and making yourself have to have so much done in a week uh, makes sense because if you don't have anything looking over your shoulder, it's really easy to just go. "Eh, eh, No one knows. Mm. Oh yeah, nobody's I'm like, gonna know. Yeah, eh, I can play. I can play this game instead. It'd be way more fun. Right. That's the kind of <laughs> trap that. That's usually what happens. That's the kind of trap that we kind of fall into. Is like we're not beholden to any uh, sponsors or advertisers or any podcast networks that have deadlines over hanging over us. So we can put this episode off another week or two, or whatever. So why not? You know. But no, we've all been pretty well, good about saying, hey, I, I still want to put something out this week just because we can't do this Goosebumps book or whatever, just because we can't get to Call right. of the Wild this week. We still should have some content out there. So mm-hmm. let's uh, think of something quick and just go for it. Right. Because at the end of the day, the moment that we push it off and we let it go, you're going to let it go again. And then it becomes easier and easier and easier to let it go. And the next thing you know, we're not doing this. We're just playing games and that's just, and we're just talking with each other <laughs> yep. and we're not recording anything. And then the podcast gets stagnant. Yep. Mm-hmm. And we don't want that. We made it to a year. I'm surprised that we did this. I'm surprised that we held it out for a year that we kept it up. That we, mm-hmm. we kept going on it. Um, it you know, and it's it, it allowed it to have its a little evolutions as it went on, and I think that that is I'm actually really proud of us to be sitting here saying that we we've done a year of this, mm-hmm. and there's mm-hmm. more to come for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm proud of the fact that we have over 1,500 downloads. That's yeah, crazy for sure. To me. So thank you, everyone who's listening. Mm-hmm. That you know we appreciate. And as much as that, as many as that is, we'd like more. So tell your friends. <laughs> tell your friends. Absolutely. Especially now that we've changed the format. You know, yeah. uh, yep. it's a little we bit are, better. We are better than our, uh, our earlier episodes. Every podcast gets better as 
as they go oh, but- get get older as they they find their rhythm find their voice you find your voice yep. usually around episode 46 <laughs> and hey we're getting there <laughs> just a few more episodes to go I just, I just watched uh ghostbusters afterlife the other day <laughs> yeah. i love that part when ray stance goes oh i love your episode he's like you're my subscriber what like, <laughs> subscriber he has is yeah. ray stance <laughs> <laughs> nice <laughs> Uh, yeah, it was classic. Uh, spoiler warning. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Spoiler warning. Yeah, yeah. Go back and erase your memory if you haven't seen Ghostbusters Afterlife. Yep. Yeah. Great chances <laughs> in it. <laughs> yep. yep. So, well, guys, what what was your favorite book that we've covered thus far? I think we know what my favorite book was that we've covered. And... and I, it was Maniac McGee easily. Mm. Um, it was actually for me. It was the book that inspired this whole idea. This whole like even bringing it up or talking about us doing this. Mm. It was Maniac McGee. Uh, it was a book that stayed with me for nearly thirty years. So, I mean, that makes a uh, a big difference. I think is how long a book remains in your memory because we've read other books that I had previously read before and it, it didn't have the same staying power. And even now when we read this again, when we read it this time, I mean, look at the reaction we had to it. It ended up being a three episode book because we felt there was so much of it that was important to, to tell. So it definitely Maniac McGee still holds as is my favorite book. What about you, Andy? Favorite book that I've that we've covered so far? Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> hmm. I mean the there's a there's a few episodes that come to mind. Um I was surprised at how much I enjoyed Ender's Game. Like, that was a good yeah, book. Yeah, it's a good book. Yeah. That's the thing. The book itself is good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And again, we thought it was for children and it's it's just become for children over the years. It was never intended for children. So that's why I think we we enjoyed it because it was a lot more for, for adults. Pro- possibly, yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, I uh, most of the books that I would read as a as a kid were from the sci fi genre, and uh, uh, sci fi is a long time favorite genre of mine. So Ender's Game was a pretty enjoyable read. Um, um, <laughs> I don't want to get too caught up on Bruce Covels, but My Teacher is an Alien and uh, the follow up book were pretty fun too. Um, oh, absolutely. Hmm. Least favorite. Let me let me do the least favorite book. See, I can't oh, even. Oh, that's see, easy. I can't even see that Bionic <laughs> Bats was my least favorite book to cover because I again liked covering a bad book because it was fun to, <laughs> to drag it. And it was a fun episode. Wound up being one of our uh, more downloaded episodes too. Uh, hmm. so, so that uh, that is a bonus, of course. Um, but um, hmm. Maybe we should have less Harold then. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> and I was like, yes. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, what did I not have fun doing? Uh, well, the, the Choose Your Own Star Wars adventure was a, a low light for sure. <laughs> Right. <laughs> it was it was disappointing as a choose your own adventure book. It was basically just retelling the the story of the movie, but I thought th- well, I mean, it's not exceedingly well written when you get uh to the other the empire heavy plot either. There's a lot of question marks as to the logic of some things, but um it was more fun to see kind of a uh, an alternate Kind of a what if scenario to uh, to choose your own, to yeah. Star Wars, New Hope. 
But yeah. Yeah, I hadn't even so, thought like, I hadn't even thought of a least favorite on that one. Uh my yeah. my least favorite book uh for us to cover was actually My Side of the Mountain. Really? It was an absolute slog to get through. Mm, yeah, it was it just a really journal. Was. It was a yeah. slog to get through that book. I fell asleep reading that book every single time I opened it up. <laughs> I'd make it about 20 minutes into reading and I'd pass out. It was just so boring. Far Side of the Mountain was a superior book because it actually had a story. Hmm. Mm. Yeah. As far as my favorite, I, I, I almost think it's that first mouse mouse on the motorcycle man i really enjoyed it it was just fun i hadn't read it since i was a kid and it was just a blast rereading it and then watching the terrible animation movie was fun and <laughs> and just you know finding out how wonderful of a person beverly cleary was it was just the whole all of it together is i think why i liked it and then the sequel was you know runaway ralph was great as well so mm. i might it be lumping really them together sequel, but... But yeah, I, I, those are I probably were my favorite, uh, least favorite. Obviously, Bionic Bats. Fuck that book. Um, <laughs> but I also didn't particularly enjoy the. Um, See, so yeah, I can't even think of the name of it. Um, one with Charles Wallace. Oh, <laughs> wrinkle in time. Or, or was it Charles Wallace? A wrinkle in time. I don't think no. it was Charles Wallace. We still don't know. Yeah, we're skip we're skipping ahead to <laughs> least favorite running joke here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's Andy's. No, but that that book I didn't particularly like, and to the point where I am trying to think of the name of it, and I can't because I was just like, eh, it was just a book I had to read for this podcast, but I'm never gonna revisit it. Hmm. So, okay. Well, plus this... I really hated the adap- the movie adaptation. Did you, did you hate that, that it was movie. so I different? Thought was I, thought, right. I thought it was a decent movie as you know as movies go. Well, uh, no, my issues were the things that they changed. Like, oh, you changed a, a quote from Gandhi to a quote from Akon. <laughs> cool. That right. doesn't... I didn't really like that part. Those things. Okay, they also yeah. completely the removed a character, uh, yeah! Ant Beast. Mm. And then they had her just show up and they're like, oh, there's Aunt Beast. And it was like, (laughs) that isn't why she was called Aunt Beast. (laughs) Like, what the fuck? Just a little cameo for the people who have read the book. But she doesn't matter here. Yeah. So I guess it would be a terrible movie if you were expecting a closer to -to one-to-one adaptation. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, uh, speaking of the running jokes, uh, do we have a does does anybody have a favorite running joke, or a least favorite running joke? <laughs> my least favorite running joke is Harold stealing my fucking tagline at the end, so I have to come up with something on the spot. You <laughs> asshole. <laughs> <coughs> That's why I had to start coming up with languages. (laughs) It's hard for me because the running jokes are kind of my department, really. So I don't know if I have a least favorite. I like all my jokes. (laughs) Well, what's your favorite one, then? My favorite one is Which is Weird because this is a children's book. (laughs) That That is a good one. Which I haven't said in a while. Right. Uh, I started going with the B story. But my mm. probably my favorite one is which is weird because this is a children's book. Taking something out of context, <laughs> making it sound either sexual or right. awful. Right. And then... Now we just uh, roll that into this is what the B story is. This is what the yep. uh, B between the lines, the, contextually, what's going on in the background in my mind, anyways. Yep. <laughs> which is weird because it's a children's story. Right. But he's definitely fucking Death <laughs> Falcon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was gonna say to play off of that. Do we have? Does somebody have a favorite B B story? Hmm. Uh, uh, actually, that Sam Gribbley is Solid Snake. 
That, that was mine. That was going to be mine too. Yeah, yep. I was like that because that's just so bizarre. By the <laughs> way, makes sense. by the way, one of the things that we did lose with uh, with the Bruce Coville interview was him squashing uh, Harold's B story. <laughs> that's right. Uh, theory. He yeah. did not squash he, he my did. B story. He, he said I will not said. say anything. No, he, he told said, you flat out it. he's not. He told he, you flat he out, flat out said it. <laughs> that he's not an yeah. alien. <laughs> Andy and I can attest to that. I no video, no proof. We're having him do it again. That, that's the only thing we're gonna vi- get video of is him saying that, and that's it. That's the only thing we're gonna have. <laughs> Eyewitness testimony is unreliable. <laughs> <sighs> Maybe Bruce Colville doesn't even realize he's an alien. Isn't that exactly what an alien would want? <laughs> we never got to that question. <laughs> but so was there any su- any favorite surprises that you guys had like a book that you were like oh this was a lot better than i expected it to be or oh this book is terrible or wow that author had that going on that's crazy i was surprised at how not child friendly rolled doll is as a person as uh uh, like philosophically what he puts into his books, just how unsuitable for modern audiences the dude is. I was uh, really thrown off by, uh, God, I can't remember his full name now, but Mr. Card. Or, um, Orson Scott Card. Reading his, yeah, yeah, Orson Scott Card, his, his freaking like, way off the wall homophobia that he has i mean he's had some he had some pretty harsh quotes about uh gay marriage about it, the mm-hmm. whole thing in general he it, i was really surprised did not expect that because right. ender's game again was a good book mhm and it was- what surprised me about that is it's something that Bruce Koval was talking to us about was how important empathy is to writing good stories. Um, how seeing other people's perspectives uh, uh, is important to having fully developed characters. One, at least that's what I got out of it. But um, it, to have such a, such a stance and opinion on like a complete lack of empathy for for people based on like a faith statement or something. Cause he belongs to the, the Mormon church or whatever. Uh, was, yeah, that was surprising to me too about Orson Scott card. My surprise was a good surprise. Cause I had never read the, my teacher is an alien series. Those, those weren't common. Like, I don't remember reading those. I remember reading other Bruce Colville books. Like the uh, Jeremy Thatcher Dragon Hatcher. I remember that one for a fact, but I don't remember reading those. And I just remember when I read them, how much I liked them. It was just surprisingly how good these are. And I'm like, how did I not read this when I was a kid? I was very surprised by it because they were so good and like would have been right up my alley. And just, I don't, I'm just flabbergasted how I missed them the first time around. So what surprised me was just how good it was. And, just how cool he was. Cause I remember when we first did it, I put up, I was like, this guy seems really cool. I think we might be able to actually get this guy for an interview. And then we were able to. Mm-hmm. So I'm just, I, I think it's really cool. So that's what surprised me is that we mm-hmm. actually, you know, and we will, we will have yep. an interview with Bruce yep. Colville because yep. again, major, he's a stand up dude. Major, major props to Janelle for uh, putting in that leg work and, uh, and getting him, uh, to talk yeah. to us in the first place. <laughs> Cause yeah, absolutely. I, I would have never did that. I'd be like, no, nah, he's no, they're too. They're he's busy. <laughs> Who are these guys? <laughs> and, oh, it's, or at least like, okay, but you got to pay me something. <laughs> yeah. I'll do right. an interview if you give well, me yeah, I mean, 500 bucks. We talked early on about different authors <laughs> and the possibility of, of doing an interview with him and all of us kind of agreed like, Nope, we'd have to contact somebody and that person would tell us that it's going to cost this much or this, that, the other, yeah, we'd have to get you know, agents. there'd be all these, yeah. Yep. There'd be all these hangups and stuff. And I think that we're not looking at the fact that these, you know, unless they're an author that is currently right now on the New York times bestseller list, mm-hmm. 
any exposure for them is is good. You know what I mean? I mean, even he said like he was excited that we cared enough to to talk to him, and mm -hmm. we did because he wrote books that we absolutely we all read when we were kids. Kids read him today. You know, mm -hmm. he's still very active from from what I can tell. I mean, he had another thing going on right after he was done with us. So, yeah. you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Orson Scott Card, really surprising piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I think we didn't find that out until the night of the episode either. Yeah, that yeah. Like we like, were all show. getting ready to read. Why that was we, he oh. on this? Sh I was like, why was he on this pundit show? I'm like, oh no. Yeah. This oh, is right. not oh, bad. He's one of those <laughs> quote unquote family values types guys. Mm -hmm. Basically, just hates gays. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Is a homophobe. Ugh. Terrible. And so, yeah, so um, the last question that I had, or that I had, was: so of all the choose your own adventures, which was your favorite ending thus hmm. far? <laughs> <laughs> Only because I was laughing so hard when I did it. And I hate for it to be mine, <laughs> but I think when we broke our legs. Have... Yeah, that's all of <laughs> our legs. We broke our legs, legs falling off the chair. Yeah. <laughs> that was the legs. best one. Yeah, that literally is why I brought this question up, because I wanted to hear that again. <laughs> brother Michelle is the absolute <laughs> best character. <laughs> oh, Brother Michelle. Yes. Oh, man. <laughs> See, you should have to talk like that all the time now, Harold, because you broke your foot. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, no man. Shit. <laughs> I think the objectively best uh, ending to a Choose Your Own Adventure was the one where you got shot in the head or something at the end of Oh, the, the death one at the warehouse? <laughs> the warehouse. Oh, yeah. That, that one was, was crazy. It was pretty yeah. brutal. Yep. Yeah, that yeah. was pretty wild. That, that book has some wild endings in it or, or i want to revisit it because it's one of them was one. like you were like it turned out you've been dead the whole time and like that this was, was the, the one where afterlife. you got shot in the head oh right yeah you were yeah. in the afterlife and you realize that it's because you got shot in the head yep, yep. yeah you were stuck in the warehouse because <sighs> of it you know? because of a workplace thing mm -hmm. where somebody came in with a gun and yeah. shot everybody like <laughs> yeah. that was what the fuck a mad gunman <laughs> bursting into the warehouse and yeah. yeah. The crazy part is, is they aren't writing choose your own adventure books for adults. <laughs> no, that's but a that wild one was, story. They said they that said was that one was the scariest for like that was yeah. one of the craziest ones, that and that's why, why because it has back some from, fucked up endings. <laughs> it was held back from mass printing for so long because it was not necessarily for for young people. No, not at all. They didn't think young people could handle not it. Not nearly. Uh, is scary was the scary stories to tell in the dark. Oh, that was yeah. Right, that we was did just that, weird. Didn't we? Yeah, oh, people eating toes. <laughs> yep. So bizarre. <sighs> people eating toes. People. That's what I take from that. Decomposing. Book. <laughs> yep. So. It was. I guess it was a banned book, so it's an important mm. read. Or the itch. I I remember seeing a documentary about people trying to get it kicked out of school libraries or oh, what wow. have you. Gary stories to tell in the dark. Yeah, because, I would say it's because they didn't read it. Probably. I would no, say it's because it. It like with artwork. any of this shit, they didn't read it. <laughs> they figured it was They're too like, scary. Oh, I saw the for cover. Kids. Yeah, <laughs> they figured it was too macabre for kids and too... fucking idiots, yeah. man. Like, no, it's just. <laughs> It's watercolor. That's how it's supposed to look. <laughs> yeah. The it, anybody that's out there trying to ban books is a moron. They 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 haven't read the book. They probably don't know how to sustain a reading mm -hmm. period of time. Like they don't know how to sustain reading for a period of time. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's longer than two sentences uh, that include freedom and murica, they mm -hmm. don't know how to read it. Yeah, uh, that's what happens with those books because Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark was not at all anything that should be banned or even kept away from children. It wasn't that scary. In fact, I don't even know that it really had scary stuff in it. There was mostly jump scares and gross. Yeah, there's a lot of gross. At the most of it. 
Yeah, yeah. a lot of gross. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, and the last question we have on our list here. What lessons do kids take from listening to us? I, I hope don't think none. I hope there I aren't any say, kids listening to us. Nobody's listening to us. <laughs> Nobody's learning anything from <laughs> these books. But adults can learn from us like which books they can show to their kids and which books they maybe shouldn't because it <laughs> oh, might maybe when they're damage reading. their brains. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe when they're reading the book to the kids, uh, they'll think back fondly on some crazy B story or <laughs> how weird it is that they'd put that into a children's book. That's what I always hope that they'll take away. <laughs> well, I think that, the, that there's definitely a takeaway that if an adult reads a uh, younger person's book, uh, they can still get a whole lot of enjoyment out of it. They can still <clears throat> learn lessons about life from them. Uh, they can still find entertaining things, and it's perfectly okay to seek enjoyment from children's, young young people's literature. I could agree with that, absolutely. Yeah. Especially if I've you're short on time. I've had a lot of time. fun reading these books. <laughs> if you're short on time for reading, don't want to read very long books, don't be ashamed of picking up something short and sweet and... Maybe a little bit more innocent, sure, but um, there's still plenty of uh, human nature in in the pages of simpler reads and a lot of creative things you could as- ascribe to uh, to these characters and stories, even if it doesn't spell it out in the page directly. <clears throat> yeah, one of the things I was going to say is like for me like I don't like scary things. I don't like horror movies, I don't like any of that stuff. But like Goosebumps are still good. Like I still like reading them cuz they are scary enough for me. And cuz I don't want I don't want to actually be scared. <laughs> I just want to be kind of like spooked out and stuff. So I'm like Goosebumps <laughs> perfect. Love it. Not gonna give me I nightmares lo- or anything like that. <laughs> I love how I just <laughs> so. emboldened you to uh, <laughs> to come out and say goosebumps yep. is just scary enough for me. <laughs> it is. It is because I don't. Welcome like scary to Dead stuff. House was. Yeah, I mean, like Welcome to Dead House was actually surprising <laughs> to me as far as like what it had going on in the mm-hmm. story. The uh, zombie vampires, all the people are dead and werewolves, <laughs> or like yeah. even like when Zombies. they were hitting him in the like the sickening smack and the mm. the billowing flaps of skin you know mm. uh yeah I, I was really surprised at how much detail he put into that mind you my Harry's adventure was not as good as i remember it being no <laughs> my Harry's adventure was a shit book yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was not good it was not scary. Yeah. It and, was not scary. Like it's not, it was, it was more sci-fi, fun. though. Yeah. And that's why we chose it for a sci-fi chapter. Yeah. Right, right. So. <laughs> but, yeah. When I cracked open that book, I remembered the entire book immediately. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, it didn't take me long to. I was like, oh, yeah, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of goosebumps, uh, that's that's actually what we got coming up next too, mm-hmm. in our our winter series is Revenge of the Snowman. It's no, a... it's Beware the Snowman. Beware the Beware Snowman. Beware the Snowman. Beware the Snowman. Yep, that's gonna come up next week on Reliterated, episode forty three. I'm through it. Have you guys finished it yet? <laughs> Working on it. We got uh, we got a whole week. Eddie's working us. on it. I just showed my hand and called it Revenge of the Snowman. So I'm just like, I gotta crack it open. Well, in your, in your defense, we, there are two we, books we have planned this chapter that include the word snowman or include snowman in <laughs> some capacity. But uh, the other ones, the Choose Your Own Adventure, uh, called the Abominable Snowman, which uh, I'll be reading. So. Yeah, that to look forward to. Which also the first one. Yeah, first choose your own adventure book. Yeah, so I'm excited. <laughs> but also does not include the word revenge. Also does not <laughs> include the word revenge. No. <laughs> nope. <laughs> yep. So is that going to do it for us this week, guys? I, think I would I say that does it. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. 
I think this is a, a pretty good throw together for uh, making up for what we had planned. <laughs> Well, we Andy. did we did have this planned, but also <laughs> alongside including a full recorded interview <laughs> with Mr. Bruce Koval, <laughs> uh, which we are working on getting in the near future. So stick around and come back for that. It will it will stand as a testament to how great and nice of a man he actually is mm -hmm. uh, when he comes back. <laughs> Even though we looked like three dummies when we realized what was happening, oh my gosh. all of our faces were, uh. <laughs> oh, they'll see. Andy has it. Yeah. Deer I, in headlights. I plan I plan to have already cut it into this episode. So, yep. Yep. so. anyone watching the video version will be able to see. And you can you probably hear it in the audio version, too. So, mm. that'll be fun. <laughs> Yeehaw. Because <laughs> I was managing to record at that point. Yeah, yeah, he recorded yeah. the uh, the point where we dressed him down for, yeah. for messing up. Yeah. Yep, because that's what I want to <laughs> hold on to for the rest of my life. If I never... Uh, if, I, if I ever miss the fact that I'm not recording again, it'll be too soon. So, Right. Hey, maybe that. You know maybe what? that we should be my mistakes. first tattoo. That should be my first tattoo. <laughs> be a oh. memento, memento style reminder. Did you hit record? Is it recording? Did, did you, you hit record? And the other arm. Did you save your progress? <laughs> save your progress off and everybody. And then uh, up on uh, on on your chest, backwards in the mirror. Don't trust Harold. <laughs> <laughs> don't believe Harold's lies. <laughs> don't believe Harold's lies. <laughs> Uh, it's okay, man. We got to make mistakes. We got to fail to succeed. So right. mm -hmm. sometimes they're the foundation of skill, very of very highly developed skills. Well, I mean, that was <laughs> or don't basic, get me wrong, pretty or big basic up, skills but... like hitting the fucking record button. <laughs> <laughs> it took it took a year for a mess up like that to happen, though. Yeah, and that's yeah. the story, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yep, and it would happen during something very exciting and, and big time for us, yep. anyways. Did, we all man. had big, yeah, big smiles on our faces, all excited, very happy, mm -hmm. right up yep. until that moment. Yep. <laughs> yeah, you can see it in the one frame that I recorded when I hit record at the very beginning. It recorded yep. a one frame video because my it, mouse double likes to like to double click on a single click, so I. Ended up double clicking the record button and stopping it right away without knowing I was not recording anymore. So, yeah, that's the background of that mistake. It was still fun. Still yeah. fun. It was a still good a time. fun talk. Yep. Still had a, yeah, we still had a wonderful yeah. conversation. So, yep. yep. <laughs> and this has been episode 42 or the, the answer to life, the universe, and everything. And our first anniversary episode uh, for Reliterated. So. It's been a great year, and hopefully um, we will have at least several more. No podcast oh, yeah. goes on forever, but we do not plan on stopping anytime soon. Absolutely not. Not All until right. we're profitable. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> if, you're, if you're in this to make money, you better get out now. because Yeah, you, <laughs> you, you cannot, get out you right cannot now. do this planning <laughs> yeah. on making money. Yeah. No. We, nope. Yeah, we got into it a little late to make money doing it. <laughs> no. no. I got in this for fun. fun. Yep. Yeah, this is what I'm what I'm doing for. Fun. We're yep. reading more. I mean, I didn't think I'd get to a part of my life where I was reading so much again, so yeah. Right. And we get to talk to each other. Thing. Gives us a good reason to talk to each other. And we get to talk to each other on a regular basis too, so because otherwise I got no reason to talk to you fuckwads. <laughs> oh right. no, not at all. <laughs> We're not on Xbox Live every night together, no. Nope. <laughs> We're actually not, not anymore. <laughs> not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> no. Just do. But. Yep. All right. That's become actually well, a more occasional thing than uh, than our podcasting talk, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it keeps us together. It keeps us communicating and just being general jackasses with each other. Yeah, absolutely. I have fun mm -hmm. with it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Good Super times. Fun. Don't care if I don't make a cent off of it. It'd be nice, but, you know, 
still fun. Not worried about that part. We're not going to worry about that, Josh. Yeah, I'm Josh. not worried about it. I was just making a joke, ass. Uh huh. <laughs> he pretends to be a socialist. And he's got capitalist. He's a he's yeah. a capitalist he's like, and socialist yay. skin. He's so I'm very sarcastic about yay capitalism. Ooh, let's destroy capitalism. Please give us money. <laughs> Please. Yeah. I live in a capitalist society. I have to play by the rules. Excuses, 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 excuses. There is no ethical consumption under uh, capitalism. Sonic the Hedgehog said so. so. If you'd like to support my podcast, Destroy Capitalism, please consider to donating to my Patreon. <laughs> Oh, all right, boys. Yeah. All right, Let's yeah. bring her down to a close. Yep. It's been a good year. All right. So, good old Midwestern goodbye. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there we go. Yep. We're all Midwestern boys giving a good old Midwestern goodbye. So, before we run the risk of going over anymore, I'll just say give a shit, read some lit. Thank you. Have a good night. Takashana. Thank you. This has been Reliterated, a production of the Chocolate Milk Friends and part of the 989 Podcast Network. If you enjoy our show, please consider giving us support by subscribing, recommending us to your book-reading, podcast-listening, 90s nostalgic friends, and most importantly, rating and reviewing us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Audible Podcasts, and Spotify. Did I mention we really want some Spotify ratings right now? Your ratings and reviews go a long way towards getting us in the ears of new listeners. You're also invited to join the growing Reliterated community on Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram. And if you really want to get nuts, we have a Discord too. So bing us and join us in this nonsense. If you have a book suggestion for a future episode or have questions for us, send us an email at reliterated at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. Daguru you. <laughs> oh, da- I thought you were telling me what to say. You. You. <laughs> That's how you pronounce it. Da Q you. In what Fuck language? You too, Josh. No. In what? What language is that? Ukrainian. Oh. Very, oh. Very good. Topical. Go Ukraine. Very timely. Yes. We're all behind <laughs> yeah, you, Ukraine. Putin. Fuck Putin. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs>